outside, the cherry blossoms are beginning to bloom. The people have gathered to celebrate the arrival of spring. But many in Japan are now approaching not spring, but a long winter. A demographic time bomb is ticking. Its shockwaves will be felt around the world. Never has a country aged as quickly as Japan will do so over the next 15 and 20 years. Japan's population is caught in a demographic vice, trapped between two irresistible forces. Not only are Japanese living longer than in any other country, but the nation's birth rate is one of the lowest in the world. Within six years, the population will start to shrink. By the end of the century, it will have halved. And as the population shrinks, the proportion that's elderly will get bigger and bigger. Before long, one in three Japanese will be 65 or older. We can foresee in the next 25 years the portion of the very aged, in other words, a people over 75, uh, is even bigger than people uh, between the ages of 65 and 75. So we are approaching an aged society today, but we will uh, soon become a very aged society. The social implications of that will be enormous, but it's the economic effects that will be truly crippling. 20 years from now, Japan will find itself in a situation that for every person who's working, there will be 1.7 people in society who are not working. The financial and economic burden, the social and political consequences of those demographics are crushing. For a glimpse of Japan's destiny, we travelled south to the inland sea, to a group of islands known as the Islands of the Aged. It's one of the most beautiful places in the country and the most geriatric place on the planet. America Australia. Australia, Jim. Australia. Hi. <laughs> The local cab driver is 84 or 85, he can't quite remember which. He slowly navigates the region's narrow streets, taking care to avoid slow-moving pedestrians. Even the barber is 84, and quite willing to admit a visit to him can be a hair-raising experience. <laughs> Mitsuyoshi Nishiguchi still enjoys his work, but he has one lament. <laughs> It's a common complaint. Children are so scarce, the region's biggest nursing home has taken the remarkable step of installing mannequins to cheer the place up. Of all the aged islands, it's the smallest that has the biggest problem. On Okikamaro, the average age is 71. Three quarters of the population is over 60. Toshiko Isobe runs Okikamaro's general store. She's done so since her husband died 20 years ago. Isobe says she's lucky if she gets 10 customers a day. <laughs> Most weeks she doesn't even make a profit, but that isn't the point. Like many of the residents here, Isobe lives all alone. The only reason that she keeps the shop open is that it stops her getting too lonely. 
商売やめてたら何にもあの奥にかがんでるばっかり誰も来ないわね足は悪いし。There are plenty of residents who seem happy to oblige. Business may be slow, but conversation is brisk. Everywhere on Okikamaro, there are reminders of the past and portents of Japan's future. The sprawling cemetery is perhaps the biggest and busiest place on the island. Scores of houses lie empty, deserted, as a testament to the dwindling population. But among those who are left, there is a strong sense of community. There needs to be. Government services for the elderly are virtually non existent. In an old fashioned rural community like this, people tend to look after one another. Some locals even catch and cook fish for their less mobile neighbours. 78 year old Haruhisha Matsumoto has been fishing these waters for 50 years. He says the notion of the old caring for the even older is an important, perhaps vital part of Okakamaro's social fabric. <laughs> But coastal life in Japan is a thing of the past. Most people in Japan will grow old not in slow moving villages, but in the more forbidding cities of the 21st century. Traditionally, Japan didn't need a welfare state. The company or the family provided the safety net. But tradition in Japan is changing. Literally in the shadows of the world's most expensive hotels, hundreds of Tokyo's homeless queue for a free meal. The companies they worked for have turned their back on them. Those who have families are too ashamed to seek help. This man predicts that this will be the future for more and more elderly people. They're volunteers who provide the food. They say the number of homeless here has tripled in just three years. Always,、um, the government s a y do some,、uh, making some shelters on some program. They have a plan, but、uh, no action, you know, nothing, nothing happened. Always just do this, do that, but nothing happened. Even now, the system of care for the very aged is in trouble. Already, there is a drastic shortage of nurses, and many doubt the system will be able to cope as the demographics change. Kyoko Kawashima is attending this age center, but as a day patient. She is one of the fortunate, for Kyoko still lives traditionally with her son's family. Thirty years ago, 80% of Japan's elderly lived with their children. It's now down to 50% and falling rapidly. Kyoko's son, Toshihide, does not expect to live with his children when he gets older. We still feel that we have to take care of、uh, our parents.、Uh, but our kids would probably never expect to take care of us. 
Uh, so we are squeezed between two, two generations. Sociologists believe that this change in the traditional oriental family is part of a wider cultural shift. Among the oriental countries, uh, based on the Confucian ideology, filial piety, respect for the seniors and elders, a quite important concept. But, and one of the indications is when we think about the elderly, we use silver, color of silver, like silver hair. Silver stands for very precious metal, but that meaning is no longer appreciated or uh, understood properly. If there is a lack of respect for the elderly now, the situation can only get worse when young people realise the financial cost of looking after the aged. The economic burden will get bigger and bigger just as there are fewer and fewer taxpayers to shoulder it. The tax burden on young people who are working is going to become humongous. In the recent reform, the government has put in place a policy that by uh, 2007 will mean that people in the labour force are paying 25% of their salary just to cover the pension obligations. On top of, top of that will go the taxes, on top of that will go the sales tax, and on top of that will go your, go your other health care benefits. So you could well see the fiscal burden, if you like, on the taxpayer climb to 60, 70, 75, 80%. Just what percentage of their income these young workers of tomorrow will spend on caring for the aged is anyone's guess. What is certain is that the Japan they know will be very different from that of their parents. The Japan of the future will no longer hold central power in Asia. Within this region, as Japan very quickly ages, much of the rest of the Asia is going to continue to get young. Take Vietnam. 1975, Vietnam was 40 million people. 2000, it was 80 million people. And today, 86.1% of Vietnamese are under 40. By 2020, Vietnam will have a population larger than Japan. The government is even considering the previously unthinkable, immigration. The more and more people are, uh, uh, what shall I say, uh, can go along with the Im uh, immigration, uh, the labour force of uh, higher uh, quality coming from the rest of the world. Is that potentially a, a source of tension in Japan? Uh, well, naturally, uh, because uh, this is an island country and uh, uh, they are not well trained to get along with the people of uh, different culture. Many of these changes may not affect Japanese society for years, but the economic impact is already being felt. One of the main reasons for Japan's inability to solve its current financial crisis is that people have recognised the dangers that lie ahead. Mr. and Mrs. Suzuki don't understand all of the financial details, in fact, aren't interested in them. But they sense in their intuition that there are big problems brewing. They see what's going on. They are not happy with what's going on. In fact, they're extremely fearful of what's going on, and they're even more fearful of the future. They know their life insurance is going to be stripped, and their pensions neutered, and their health care slimmed down. So what are they doing? They're doing the only rational thing they can do. Paradoxically, it's to increase their savings rate, even if interest rates are almost at zero. They therefore dampen their spending. That great engine, which is consumer spending, isn't there to drive the economy. And so already the failure of policy to address these issues for the future are having a massive impact on Japan today. Fear of the future has made Japanese the greatest savers on earth. But retail expenditure has fallen for seven straight years and deflation has set in. Almost every economic indicator, from unemployment to corporate bankruptcies, is at its worst level since the war. Granny Suzuki still believes the numbers in her passbook. And yet, 
we know they can't be true simply by looking at what's going on in the, in the life insurance industry. I guess we could say never in history has so much been, money been lost by so many people by the mismanagement of so few. Does that mean then that when this ageing population retires, when we get to this point, when they, they want to get the pension, they want to get the savings, the money isn't going to be there? The money is not there today. The one place that Japanese savings do still exist is in investments overseas, especially in America. If these funds were withdrawn to fund the aged, the impact on the global economy would be devastating. It wouldn't matter so much if Japan was a small country, but this is, after all, the second largest economy in the world. Its economy is today two times larger than the economy of the rest of Asia. So whatever happens to the Japanese savings, which over the last 20, 30 years have been exported to the world and have financed much of the world economy, that's going to have a dramatic impact on how things are organized globally. It seems Japan's remarkable growth is now well and truly over. The system that transformed the country and funded the world is unraveling, economically and socially. It is ironic that the strength and vigour of the new global economic order should depend so much on a nation growing frail.